I'm actually super excited to uh, to taste this today. It's been a while since I've made it. We're gonna have ourselves an amazing, amazing, natural, free product that you at home can be making after this video. I think about it for years, those companies have been selling us prebiotics, probiotics, uh, things that are good for gut health, and you're paying an awful lot through the nose at the supermarkets, and really, it is so simple, and you're gonna learn this skill today, how to do this, and, and you, you at home can do it as well. Oh, you. <laughs> I'm just gonna chuck this out there. I was just chuckling to myself, probably another sign of madness, that whilst I was serving in the armed forces, I never really knew much about this sort of thing. And in fact, actually, I go as far as to say, nutritionally, my diet was nowhere near as diverse or as good as it is now. Glorious color. And of course, like any uh, young man who's expected to perform at a high level, I had lots of additives, things like tubs of protein and time in the gym and uh, let's get massive. Hot massive was, was quite high on the list of priorities at that time. And so I really probably wasn't thinking enough about my gut health and the importance of looking after myself long term. Something which has greatly changed now and something that uh, hopefully through this video I can try and promote further for myself and help you guys at home to do the same too. Hi guys, it's Nick here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and today I'm going to be showing you something you maybe didn't know about wild garlic. What we're going to be doing today is essentially lacto fermenting the wild garlic okay and uh, i'm going to be taking you through a four stage process for that so for this to work we are going to need one of our three types of wild garlic here in the uk and we are going to be focusing in on ramsons okay that's its common name is latin is allium urstianum we also have here in the uk allularia petulata known as jack by the hedge and we also have the three-cornered leek, which is Allium triquetrium. So today it's all about the Ramsons. But before we get started, I think it's probably best that we actually talk about what is lacto-fermentation okay. and why do it in the first place. Lacto-fermentation is the process of cultivating that good, healthy gut bacteria, lactobacillus, um, which helps us to have a more efficient digestive system, um, and is a really healthy prebiotic addition to your gut flora. It's the very same bacteria we find in sauerkraut and in kimchi and it's realistically probably something that we should all be ingesting a little bit more of. After all, healthy gut, healthy body, healthy mind. Here they come. Oh. You. Oh. Can we jump it? Come on, silly dog. You can jump that. Jump. Good girl. Come on. That's it. And look at this glorious garlic. Oh, this is the Ramsons I was just alluding to. This lovely flat bladed, quite soft leaf here with the, uh... you hold it up to the light. You can see when I give it that rub test almost goes translucent there and that smell and aroma of garlic is very very telling straight away guys be sure to check out our other video on wild garlic um, as we talk about solely this type of wild garlic identifying it how to find it uh, and some of its its other medicinal benefits today i'm about to go ahead and collect a whole swathes of this stuff from on this side of the uh, untouched riverbank and then we're going to take it back up to the main camp so I've got a little foraging pouch on the side of me today, you can see. And inside, I've got a Ziploc bag. Now the Ziploc bag is gonna help this stay nice and fresh, okay? And I'm just gonna pop that inside as a liner for the inside of my little foraging pouch. Um, it's quite a simple idea. All I'm gonna do is open up the lip, place my hand inside, and then fold the lip over the edge of the bag. Like so, okay. And then I shouldn't have too many problems filling this bag. And things I'm looking for are any impurities on the leaves. Okay, when I'm picking these things, I want to break them. I want to break the stem off or slice the stem if I've got my knife on me. Grab these nice and low and slice the stems. Now be sure what you're picking 
is just wild garlic. And again, in our other video, I will have spoken about some of the other variants that the lookalikes that are out there. And in fact, I can see one not too far away from me. Okay, and it's just here. Okay, and this is Arum Immaculatum. I'm going to go ahead and fill my little foraging pouch up with wild garlic. Okay, that's literally now going to go my pouch, like so, until I've filled up the whole pouch. I think that's as much as this bag is going to hold. So now I'm going to head back up to the camp. We're going to get the fire up and going proper. Um, we're going to get the kettle on because of course we're going to need to boil water to sterilize our container for this stuff to go into and the next part of the process. So let's have a quick chat about how it works. With a simple addition of a little bit of salt and no other ingredients, the salt will kill off the unhealthy bacteria, leaving only the bacillus salt resistant variant. This then, as it ferments, turns the sugars into lactic acid, which is a natural preservative and helps to just continue to multiply that bacillus. You end up with a product that's getting stronger and stronger and better and better at doing what it does. Now there is a trade-off at some point and that's with the taste. So after it's been popped away in the cupboard for a few days, you're gonna need to check on it and you're gonna need to taste it from time to time until it's to your liking. And once you've gone ahead and done that, absolutely go for it. Get it in every type of food you're eating and really, really enjoy it because um, it's such a simple thing to be able to do. So you're going to need to sterilize the jar. So make sure you've got a kettle of good hot water on the standby. Boiling water is one of the best ways to sterilize things. Just let that cool for a second, it's getting bananas. Then take all the wild garlic in your pocket. Nice big healthy bag. Okay, and the first thing I'm gonna do is use some cold water just to give these leaves a bit of a wash off. Ideally, if you've got access to a kitchen, then that's also very helpful. Let's head over to here in the cabin. And I'm literally just gonna go ahead and give these leaves a bit of a nice wash. Because of course, things they could have come into contact with would be, you know, other animals, um, bird poo, all sorts of bits and pieces. So just giving them a good wash is a really good idea. Um, and then it also gives me a chance to have a look through carefully and see whether any ivy has crept in there or anything that might be untoward. I'm pretty confident in my foraging here. I was nice and methodical today, so you know there wasn't any rampant, rampant foraging action going on. I wasn't just mindlessly throwing stuff into the pouch. Oh, don't open the, don't open the drain. Okay, and then all that's going to happen is it's going to go back into going to go back into the bowl. If you're new to the channel, I'm Nick uh, from Hidden Valley Bushcraft. Um, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Okay, one of the next stages I'm going to have to do is add the salt. So, bearing in mind that all this is about to get taken outside and smashed up with a stick, what I now need to do is add that all-important sea salt and the unit of measure, to be honest, is not that important at this stage. <laughs> Just go big or go home. I'm gonna keep turning this thing until I feel I've got two, maybe three tablespoons of salt in here, because you need that salt to kill off that unhealthy bacteria. The next thing I wanna do is take it outside and start pounding it up with a stick. Now this is gonna take a while, so don't be in a rush. Remember what you're looking to do is break up all the cells inside these leaves and really create lots of cellular damage. So now we can see if we look inside the bowl, an awful lot of liquid. Can you see that lovely dark green colored liquid, that brine? See it bubbling away as well? There's obviously a chemical process that already started. So I'm gonna keep going, take it a little bit further until I'm happy that I could begin to pack my jar and that the liquid will cover the main body and material of the garlic, okay? So the liquid wants to be above that in a best case scenario. So that's pretty much step two done. Let's roll into step three, which is sterilizing our container. You're looking for that strong rolling boil, guys. That's how you know it's definitely got up to the temperature you need. So we're gonna start off this side, pour boiling water all over there. Fill this container. 
The reason we're doing this, guys, is the only bacteria that we want inside this jar is the one, that, the bacillus that we've cultivated for today's purposes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and very carefully lift the lip and tip that away like that. And then you're gonna need something like a spoon or a scoop to get all of this into here. There we go, just encourage it in. Okay, and you wanna pack this in as tightly as you can, guys. What's most important is the liquid. So go ahead and pack this as tightly as you can. And you should be able to see that liquid content coming up the side of the jar there. As I push it down, you can see it smushing away. Get that all inside there, nice. And then see if you can just cover it with the remaining liquid. Bring that up to the top. It's gonna to give you that lovely seal that you want that I was talking about. Okay, so we've got as much of the, uh, the actual material in there as possible. And we've got our sterilized lid. We're gonna pop that on there so that hopefully we've got a nice tight seal. Okay, and then that is gonna go away in the cupboard for a little while to start fermenting. What a lovely, lovely thing to be able to make. The step four, which is to take the finished end product and we're gonna go ahead and put it away in the cabin, in the cupboard. Look at that glorious color. Just gonna pop it in the cupboard under the sink. There we go. That's gonna live in here in the dark at the temperature of the cabin for the next three to four days. Here we go. Bit of a mess in here at the moment. Slowly getting there. It's in that one. Ta-da! Oh, the moment of justice. Is it gonna be any good? <laughs> Am I gonna retch and vomit or will I be all right? Because of course, remember, this is completely void of any sugar whatsoever. I brought down a little spoon I made a while ago. This is one of my older ones of the designs I make. And uh, that's because this is going to stink of garlic afterwards. So we're gonna have a little go here. Oh, ho, ho. now goes without saying it smells very garlicky. And let's have a little look here. Oh, look at the color of that liquid. <laughs> it's very salty. And there's a little bit of a tang to it too. Let's, let's go for a bit of leaf here. Now remember, this is going to be an additive to your food, not the main show. Obviously it's really, really rich garlic flavor coming through, very the oniony side of garlic. And uh, yeah, that is now something that I can take home because as I said, I don't like mine to be far, far too overpowering and too, I don't know what the word is, fermenty, uh, tangy, um, almost, well, fermented. I was gonna put it back into the cabin. I think I'm gonna take it home and this is gonna go into all kinds of pasta dishes. For any of you guys at home uh, trying this today, Please, please, please make sure you give us your feedback in the comments box below. That'd be really helpful as I'd love to hear how your version of this comes out and see what your, your thinking is on the taste and whether you think it's done any good for you, you know? Remember guys, if you heat this stuff up too far, you're going to kill off that good bacteria that we've been trying to harvest. So point to note, don't stick it in lots of hot food because it just doesn't work that way. Equally, don't put it in anything that's going to have or add sugar to uh, because sugar is going to reverse the process and encourage the growth of that bad bacteria in your gut, okay? So we, what we're trying to do, this is all about gut health. This is all about healthy body, healthy mind. At the end of the day, this is why we're doing this in the first place. And so what you want to try and do is minimize the amount of sugar going in and promote that good healthy gut flora and those really good cultures okay that you're going to need to improve your digestive system and make your body more efficient at doing what it does best okay so remember the majority or the largest part of your immune system is actually produced in your gut flora so the better or the more improved you can make your gut flora okay the better your immune system is going to operate at especially since we've just gone through or we are still in a global pandemic uh, where having a strong immune system is probably possibly the difference between going down hard with the obvious viruses or maybe getting through it so yeah look after yourselves guys 
use the outdoors to do so, it's free. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Goldsmith of Hidden Valley Bushcraft. Okay, and hopefully we're helping you to master the outdoors and ultimately master yourselves. Bye for now. So in the last couple of days, you may also notice I, I'm sporting a bit of a black eye at the moment. I managed to uh, whack myself in the face with making a massive habitat pile. Um, and it's a, you know, a safety point you should probably pay attention to is that uh, springy bowels and things like that will hold a lot of energy. Uh, and as I, I went to maneuver a few pieces, it's just flicked back and hit me straight across the face. I'm quite lucky I haven't damaged the eye, but um, it, where it's had like little pieces on it, it's hit me in several parts and right across here. So um, that'll teach me, but uh, such is some of the dangers of working in the outdoors.